عروة ابن الزبير a man with a golden lineage his father is as Zubair ibn al-Awwam radiyallahu anhu one of the ten people whom the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave glad tidings to be of the people of Jannah his mother is Asma radiyallahu anha the daughter of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu another man of the ten people of Jannah his brother is Abdullah ibn Zubair radiyallahu anhu his maternal aunt is Aisha radiyallahu anha our mother may Allah perpetually be pleased with her and her father and all the companions radiyallahu anhum ajma'i this man was an eminent scholar in the science of hadith and in the science of fiqh so much so that he was one of seven people in al Madina to whom people referred for fatwa including the companions themselves and that was due to the fact that he was always with his maternal aunt radiyallahu anha Aisha to the extent that he once said if Aisha was to die now I don't have anything of her knowledge that I don't possess not a single hadith that I don't have radiyallahu anha he was famous of being generous knowledgeable very devout in his worship He was always reciting Quran. He would recite one fourth of the Quran during the day and during the night he would pray to Hajjud using the same one fourth. But the one thing where his name pops up becomes very bright is the quality of a rida being content with the decrees of Allah Azza wa Jal. The famous astonishing story about him is that during the caliphate of Al-Walid ibn Abdul Malik, Al-Walid called upon him to visit him in Damascus from Medina. So he prepared himself for the journey and he accompanied with him his son Muhammad ibn Urwa. The dearest of all of his children to him was this Muhammad. So he took him with him on this journey. As they started the journey, a short while later, he had a, a wound that started developing and then it spread in, 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 in his foot, reached his ankle, reached his shin to the extent that he could not walk. So when they reached the Khalifa, Al-Walid, they actually had to carry him into the presence of Al-Walid. Al-Walid was deeply saddened that his guest, such an honorable scholar with such a lineage, would be suffering from this. So he called the best of the doctors to look into his situation. They checked him. They said, this has de developed into gangrene and his foot must be cut off. We have to amputate his foot, his, uh, his leg. He refused. Doctor said, if it reaches your knee, it will be very difficult to control and it will cause your death. At this, he gave in. 
He said, okay. So when the doctor came, who was going to carry out this surgery, he said, let me give you a tranquilizer, something which is similar to anesthesia in our time. He said, no. They said, he said, then at least drink a glass of wine or an, any intoxicant so you would not suffer the pain. He said, Subhanallah, I never thought a man could consume something to make him lose consciousness to the extent that he forgets his Lord. In addition, I was never to seek treatment through something that Allah has forbidden. Just carry on with what you have to do. And he was old at the time. This was years, few years before his death. He was very old. They said, then let us call some men to hold you when we start amputating your, your leg. He said, no need. Just leave me alone and start doing your job. So the doctor started, and I want you to visualize this surgery with nothing to make him not feel the pain. He took the blade and went through the skin into the flesh until he reached the bone. And at that, he grabbed the saw and started sewing his uh, boom. Brothers, sisters, this is painful. This is difficult to go through. The only thing he uttered during this was, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. These are the only two things he started saying throughout this tough surgery. They amputated, amputated his, his leg and he was still conscious with a lot of bleeding. And in order to stop this bleeding, they boiled oil and brought it and poured, it, poured that oil on his remaining part of the shin. At this he fainted. He lost his consciousness. He couldn't tolerate that pain, so he lost consciousness. Subhanallah. This is difficult. When he regained his consciousness, they brought that amputated part of his, his leg with his foot in the container which they had it in and placed it in front of him. He grabbed it started turning it around and looking at it and said, I swear by the one who mounted me on you, Allah knows that I have never ever used you to walk to anything that Allah prohibited. Allahu Akbar. During that period, his son Muhammad had entered into the stable of horses of the Caliph. And one of the horses kicked him and killed him. Shot number two. Affliction number two. With the dearest son. Al Walid didn't know what to do, didn't know how to convey this. So he decided to just openly say it to him. So he went to him and he said, your son died. So persevere and ask Allah's reward in this. The only thing he said at that, 
after the second affliction. لَقَدْ لَقِينَا مِنْ سَفَرِنَا هَذَا نَصَبًا We have suffered during this journey of ours. Some of the scholars said, after he said that, it is as if he felt guilt that he said these words and these words but were nothing but a verse. So he said after that, Oh Allah, you've given me four limbs and you've taken one and you left me with three to enjoy. Oh Allah, like alhamd. Then he said, Oh Allah, you have given me seven children, seven boys. You've taken only one. And you left me six children or boys. If you have afflicted me once, then you have certainly given me well-being for a long period. And if you have taken one thing from me, then you have certainly given me a lot. This level of rida, of being content with the decrees of Allah Azza wa Jal is unparalleled. But the one thing that one can say after this story is, Those are the ones whom Allah has guided. So into their footsteps, you need to follow. أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا الرضا contentment being pleased with the decrees of Allah عز وجل it is a state where the heart accepts is pleased with the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal without any objection. Whether that decree is something that pleases the person or displeases the person. This is what a rida is. And indeed it is a very lofty rank and state of the heart that we must strive to obtain. And out of the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal, He did not oblige people to achieve this state. It's only recommended. Why? Because it's something difficult. And not everyone can become or can obtain a rida. Umar ibn al-Khattab had appointed Abu Musa al-Ash'ari as a governor over al-Basra in Iraq. So one day he sent him a long letter. I'm just going to extract a sentence from it, which is relevant to what we're talking about. He said, عَلَيْكَ بِالْرِضَى He said, be content for all goodness lies in being content. So if you can be content, then be so. If you cannot, then nothing less than being patient. 
Because as we said, Rida is accepting with pleasure the decree of Allah. Whereas being patient is struggling to overcome the bitterness of the difficulty you're going through. But we must be patient. Why? Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, In Allah Ida Habba Kawman Ibtalahu. When Allah loves a people, He will afflict them. Faman Radiya Falahu Rida. Whoever is content will get the pleasure of Allah. Waman Sakhita Falahu Sukht. And whoever is not patient, and he did not say content. Who is never, whoever is not content, whoever is not patient, would receive the wrath of Allah Azza wa Jal. So being patient is mandatory. Because the essence of not being patient, not persevering through the difficulty, is that you object to what Allah decrees. And that's not allowed. We cannot object to Allah Azza wa Jal and what He decides and what He wills and what He does and what He decrees. So not being patient is not allowed. However, not being content makes you miss out on the reward of Rida. But it does not make you incur a sin. And the highest level after a rida is al mahabba actually loving or liking what allah azza wa jal decreed upon you patient is just to bite through it rida is to accept it love is to actually love what Allah Azza wa Jal wanted for you. Why? Because Allah Azza wa Jal only decrees for the believer that which is good for him and her. Even if the believing man or woman sees it to be otherwise. Rida is so important that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to ask Allah Azza wa Jal to grant him Rida wa as'aluka Rida ba'da al-qada I ask you to grant me contentment when you decree something and this is reported by Al-Bayhaqi classified as authentic by Al-Albani We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to help us achieve this quality, this noble and lofty rank, and act upon it in our lives. Allahumma inna nas'aluka rida ba'da al-qadar. 